magic moment So different and so new Was like any other Until I kissed you And then it happened it took me by surprise, I knew that you felt it too. Father, look in your eyes, sweeter than wine. Softer than a summer night. Everything I want to have, whenever I hold you tight. This magic moment. While your lips are close to mine, will last forever, forever till the end of time. Whoa, 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 whoa. This magic moment. So different and so new Was like any other Until I kissed you I knew it happened Summer night, everything I want to have, whenever I hold you tight, this magic moment, while the lips are close to mine, will last forever, forever till the Up and everybody, how are you feeling? Hey. They're like, we're so hungry. Did you know that we have an awesome tent of delicious food that's over there? If you already ate, give me woo woo. Oh, you're still eating. I know, sorry. I didn't mean to make you talk with your mouth full. I'm just like, Hop it, everybody. This is the second annual Hop a Day Festival. And today we are celebrating all of the islands of the Marianas. Guam being the largest one, of course. And all of our, our sistering islands of the CNMI. And we are here for a really special reason. And that's to practice our core value of Enat Pat Malik. If you know what Enat Pat Malik is, raise your hand. Oh my goodness. Yes? Good, good. I'm going to talk a little bit about that before we begin. So, Inakpa Maulik. Inakpa? Everybody say Inakpa. Very good. That means to make, right? Maulik. Everybody say Maulik. That means good, right? So, when you put it together, you get Inakpa Maulik. It means to make good. And that's really what we're doing here. We're making an amazing, wonderful, positive experience together to celebrate who we are as a Chamorro community here in San Diego. If you're ready to do that, give me a woo -woo! Yes, okay. They're like, all right, all right. We'll start. Okay, so uh, just some house rules for today. I want to let you know who's here. And then we're going to have a chance, opportunity to do our Pledge of Allegiance. Okay? We're going to have some planes flying over all the time. So I'm probably going to have to talk a little louder. I'm trying to talk in my, my teacher voice like this. I'm just kidding. We're going to sing our Pinoki tomorrow. If you know the Pinoki tomorrow, give me, uh, give me, a, give me a thumbs up. You do good job, man. I'm like, I got the first line. The Bonogi Chamorro, we're also going to do the CNMI um, anthem. And then we have a fun list of presentations. We have Uncle Mario coming up. He's a very, very well known master carver, Kundu builder. I'm going to stay right here so I don't make too much noise. And then we are going to have an opportunity to hear all the way from the beautiful island Guahan, Auntie Judy. She's going to talk about. <sighs> ornamentation. She's going to talk about the significance of our Chamorro jewelry. And then we have the kids who you just saw. They're doing their sound check, making sure that they sound fabulous for you, the Mesclan kids. Mesclan means mixed. Yeah? And then we're going to have the one and only Uno Hit dancers come up 
Um, I'm so excited to see what they're presenting today. They've been working really hard. They got this OG drummer. Who else? I'm oh, sorry. Hey! Who uh, is going to be showing all of their, the, uh, some of our dances from the island of Wuhan and the Sierra Madre. And after that, we're going to have an opportunity to have Auntie Janice and the band come up again. And then at the very end of it, if you're feeling really fancy and you want to participate, Auntie Janice is going to do a jam session. Yeah, so everybody at 30 is going to be more than welcome to bring their own instruments or play. Use your own instrument, your voice. Maybe it, just if you're tone deaf, I don't know. I just kidding. Uh, but we're gonna have a jam session at the end of that. Okay. Um, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. All right. May I please have everybody please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is right here on, on the yes, left the side over there. there. Alright. Please put your hands over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Alright. We're gonna do the scene of my song. CNMI first. How many people are from the CNMI out here? Anybody from CNMI? Can you help us sing the song? No? I'm looking for my CNMI. Uno head. Uno head. Uno head. Anybody uno head? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Just come over here and help us. Because we don't really know it, but we'll try it, okay? It's in G. Go ahead, baby. Get up there. Come on, CNMI. I mean, uno head. Help me sing this song. Yeah. Come on. Come on, we're gonna help. Grab yes, we gotta represent Yeah. 
closer to my mouth. <laughs> Alright, okay everybody, so today we have again a fun program, but I real quickly want to highlight some fancy people. So, if you could help me with some applause and some whoop whoops, then I think it's going to be great. Alright? Like, Can you see Janelle? We're not ready to make all that noise yet. It's too cold. It's going to warm you up. When you make a lot of noise, it helps warm the core. Just kidding. Alright. So, I want to recognize the Guam Visitors Bureau. Uh, they've been taking care of us, giving us an avenue to bring our, our people and some resources from here to there. It's amazing that they are able to continue supporting us in the House of Tomorrow's. Oh, Aire, Hafere. My name is Janelle. Yeah. Uh, Kuizan Farron. I am the daughter of John Farron. He is currently in Guahan. I'm really angry at him. You can tell him. Because my birthday was yesterday. So, real quickly. Can everybody sing me happy birthday? Ready? We're gonna do it. Ready? Sit. Go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, I love my daddy. Happy birthday to you. May the dear Lord bless everyone. May the dear Lord bless us. May the dear Lord bless House of Chimoles. May the dear Lord bless everybody. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah! I turned 30, guys. I know. I was like, somebody was like, Janelle, it doesn't hurt to turn 30. It's okay. I was like, what are you talking about? My right knee hurts. My knee hurt. I mean, my elbow. Yeah. Okay. I'm just kidding. All right. Let's get back to fun. Um, I want to thank Auntie Joey and Auntie Lolly who are not here today. They've been really big contributors to the House of Tomorrow and the project here with our, house, our hospitality and representing us. I want to give it up for the Marianas uh, Visitors Association, the Lady D Foundation, and Uncle David and Doris Ann Atlick for uh, recognizing them for, ladies and gentlemen, $75,000 from MVA and CNMI. Please give them a round of applause for that. Woo. They were able to build relationships with our CNMI our governor and they were presented a check to support our initiatives here for the House of Tomorrow. So it's quite amazing. Uh, next after that, we have the Tomorrow Optimist Club. Where's Uncle Greg? Uncle Greg, where are you? He's over there somewhere. Say hi to Uncle Greg if you can. He's our president of the Chamal Optimist Club. Some of you already know, but they do three signature programs. That is the Paso Chamorro Project here, the Childhood Cancer Program, and Uno Hit Dance Project. Yeah? Uh, so go and join that. I just got sworn in. It was really cool. I got a pin and everything. I was like, I, Janelle, I will be an optimist for life. No, it was great. I, it was such an amazing professional development opportunity. So if you are interested in doing that and supporting us, please make your way over. Um, I would like to thank Islander Grill, who catered the food. Um, give it up for Etty Sandy Uslander. She's the Uno Hit founder and president. Uh, right after that is a, another wonderful lady, her mom, Auntie Judy, Dr. Judy Flores, visiting um, and representing her famous boutique artist, I mean famous boutique artist, and um, she's a historian and an author. And then after that, you're going to hear him soon, Uncle Mario, he's a master canoe builder, 
uh, and call her with Jamal Hands and Education Links Unity. In addition to that, uh, my family is here. My Auntie Marie, my Uncle Danny, my Auntie Linda, my Auntie Jovita. Wave everybody. Say hi. Don't be shy. They're here to help set up the foundation for tomorrow Arts, Crafts, Artifacts, and Education display over there. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask them. Okay. And then after that, we have the Mescaline Tomorrow Kids Band that's run with Kay, Kai and Aiden. Uh, Kai, Alina, Sophia, uh, Jana Janaika, and uh, it's all under the direction of Tony Chotas. Um, we have NC Janice, who we want to thank today as well. With Ivan Mist, she's also here providing the sound. Okay, every time I turn, it goes whoop. So I'm just going to stay right here. And now move like Laddie Stone. I'm just, okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to also thank Auntie Doris Ann and Trish Shook at the hospitality booth for the House of Tomorrow. Um, all of the food volunteers from Udo Hit, woohoo, run by Auntie Brianda. Auntie Brianda's amazing. Um, Susan and all of the parents and the children. And then Auntie. I say empty for everybody. President Heather, she's the House of Pacific Relations. Donna Rodriguez of the Child Cancer Program. And Lomba Radio, woohoo! Casey Conception, um, Etsy Susan, and Uncle Pat Cabrera, who are also members of the House of Tomorrow. And then last but not least, they're going to close our entertainment today, is Uno Hit. I love this program. I'll probably talk more about them when I get there. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for... She got to say one more thing. Come on. A very important thing. We have Sandy Slander over here. And Sandy, you want to say a few things? Oh, I just wanted to add, in addition to all of the local and our um, sponsors from our island, uh, the Guam Visitors Bureau has been a, a sponsor of this uh, event in particular. And we thank them for uh, reaching back and helping us to share the culture beyond the island. Thank you so much, Auntie Sandy. Yes. So, I'm looking for a fine young man but who goes by the name of Uncle Mario Bo Uncle Mario? Uncle Mario Boja. Yeah, is he coming? He's probably yeah. teaching. Yeah. Come on up there. He's going to be talking a little bit about his Sekman project. So, if you haven't been able to learn about what that is, um, it's quite a journey that he took to build a Sekman here in San Diego after recovering some documents. And to Jojo, who's that young guy? There he is. He's on his way. But it's been phenomenal seeing the journey. Um, he's a super passionate, super loving, very open tomorrow um, educator. So he has a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so thankful that he's here to share it with you all. So please put your hands together for Uncle Mario Borja! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for your presence. It's a beautiful day, and the rain has, has stopped, so we're all here. And we're here for a purpose. We're here to celebrate Chamoru culture and language. I'm going to share with you, share with you a story that brings all that to focus. This story that I'm going to share, this story that I'm going to share with you has been told a hundred times in many languages as well. It's a true story and it begins like this. One early morning in the southern part of Guam, this chief went out just before sunrise, went atop the hill overlooking his village and he, he looked down at his village and he, he felt content. And as, the, as he gazed over the horizon, his feeling of contentment turned into fear. For in the distance, he saw three vessels, three big ships that he's never seen before. Ships and vessels unlike the vessels from his neighboring islands. In fear, he ran down to his village. He knew that soon there would be changes on the island and in his village. So he ran down to the village, summoned his people, and he goes, come, come. They all came out and gathered by the beach. And he points out to the ocean and he says, look, look, they are coming. And soon, soon our language and culture, our language and culture will be destroyed. And with that fear and concern, he said, we must, 
we must find a way to to hide our culture and language so that they don't find it and it would not be destroyed. One lady in the front of the crowd said, Ah, Chief! Chief! I know! We can hide our culture and language up by the coconut trees and thought, Oh, they won't find it there. The Chief looked at the long young lady and said, Hmm, perhaps. Suddenly, an older gentleman in the middle of the crowd jumped up and he goes, Chief! Yeah, you're wrong, you're wrong. <coughs> if we really want to save our culture and language so that they don't get destroyed, we must hide it down beneath the rocks down by the river. Ah, they will never, they will never dig it up there. And he said, oh yeah, that's a good idea. Then as he, as he waited for, for more suggestions from the crowd, the silence was overwhelmed by, by this young, um, this older lady, Tan Maria. Tan Maria jumped up, he goes, Chief! Chief, you're wrong, you're all wrong. And the chief went back and looked at Tan Maria and said, Tan Maria, now Tan Maria, she's a widow. She has no husband, no kids. She's actually a little senile. She's known to wander the streets of the village just mumbling to herself, nobody really listens to her. But this time she had something to offer. She said, Chief, you're all wrong. If you really want to, to save our culture and our language, we, we cannot hide it on the coconut trees. No, they'll climb up and find it. We cannot take it and hide it beneath the rocks down by the river. Oh, they'll, they'll go, go down there and dig it up. If we really want to preserve that, Chief, we must, we must hide it in our children. The chief looked and he goes, hide it in our children? Yes, and the chief wondered a bit, then realized the wisdom of this lady. Today, we are not just talking about that story, we're living that story. In fact, when we have our kids, oh, here they are. I want to introduce you to Jahi and Javen. This is a sample of what we are doing to hide it in our children. We want to build canoes. The story also says that if you want to learn about the culture of an island, you got to look at its canoes. And here it is. Although we cannot build the canoes with the, with the resources back on the islands, we have to look at the resources abound us here. And guess what? Home Depot is it's just around your corner and from Home Depot we can find all the resources to build a canoe albeit a roofing tin canoe this is what we call the Zingalaidi you know a long time ago when we were growing up in school we were taught more about the Panina, the Pinta and the Santa Maria we were not taught about the big canoes that once our ancestors built with pride we only had access to the small canoes. But here, if we just start with small canoes, perhaps, perhaps these kids can, can find the, the spirit and the cabeza, the head, and the kanai, the hands, and the carazón, the heart, to, to build a canoe. But we have to first hide it in our children. So this is our attempt to hide the knowledge of canoe building, albeit I start with roofing tins in our children. That's what I want to share with you today. Everything that we're doing here is about preserving, sustaining our island culture and our island language. Thank you very much for your presence. Para pinatunizu. God bless you. Saina Maasi. Thank you. Alueta, alua, alueta. Alueta, alua, alueta. Ngan, 
Thank you, Jahi, and thank you, Javen. These two guys were the original young men who participated in the actual construction of a large canoe, a 47-foot canoe in El Cajon. We're bringing them up with the right story and the right experience. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Uncle Mario Borja. Woohoo! Oh my goodness. Yes, those gentlemen, they were working hard. I saw them earlier. They got here at like before sunrise. It was dark, it was cold. I'm just playing. They were, but they're su it's super amazing to see our youth and our students come together and find an interest in who we are. Our Chamorro people have gone through a load of pain and a load of colonization and so much to be here. So it's very, very uh, fulfilling to be able to see our, our younger generations jump in and really own who they are and really be invested in learning, right? So at this time, I want to I wanna highlight that we have Mr. Luis here. Everybody say hi, Luis. He's going to be covering our event today. And he is going to be able to post this as well so we can see it online. Um, let me put this down. So, real quick, I want to do roll call, roll call, because there's so many different villages in the beautiful land of Guahan, and then there's also different islands, right? So, do I have any representatives from the island of Tinian? No. Oh, no, no. Rhoda! <laughs> Ooh, Rhoda up in the back! Woohoo! How about Saipan? I'm like, what else, what else do I, what else? Who am I missing? I'm Daria. missing a bunch. Which one? Daria. 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 <laughs> yes, anybody? <laughs> no. Okay, villages. Villages, villages. How about the village of Itarahan? Yeah, I know, me too, me too, me too, me too. <laughs> How about the village of Jigo? Yeah, I know, right? How about the village of San Diego? Yeah, I know. San Diego's amazing. And just so you know, I also, again, I want to highlight GVB. They've been such an amazing contributor to us. And if you want to stop by, if you haven't already, um, get some resources. It's amazing just to read along and see what's happening and be able to recognize the hard work that it's been, um, that it takes to actually continue the relationship we have here. So. Uh, up next, we're going to bring up a beautiful young lady, but I'm going to talk real fast one more time about the opportunity to become a member of the House of Chamorro. So, let me show you my fancy shirt. So, if you have one of these shirts already, make some noise. That means you've been already involved and you've volunteered. There's so many ways to get involved, and I can't advocate enough for everybody to put their hands in and make their their time available right this project is going to take us a while so if you stick on and stick with us it's going to be such an amazing a uh, fulfilling experience to have it here we're going to have our own house and we're going to be the only island in the pacific representing and that there's no house of hawaii there's no house of tahiti there's no house of samoa there's no house of polynesia there will be a house of chamorros so that is a big deal for us. So if you haven't already, if you have done something, make some noise. Ah, so I can get more, get more. You're like, I come and I watch the events. That's great, I love it. But if you would like to help set up, be a volunteer, if you would like to donate and become a member, that's all available for us. Um, we had this gala that wasn't too long ago and it was really amazing to see our, our folks our folks donate items so I'm not wearing it but Auntie Judy's going to talk about the ornamentation but it was this really cool spondylus bracelet and I was very impressed because I have like no Chamorro jewelry I'm wearing one Chamorro wait mo one Guam pendant in this ear because I lost the other one if you find it please return it I didn't lose it here I'm just kidding I was moving around too much and it just fell out anyhow um, but it's it's quite amazing. So please take the time and go visit the vendors. Go visit uh, the house of uh, the display over here and grab some Chamorro food. 
okay? And to Judy, how you feeling? Feeling great? Feeling good? All right. I would love to call up this this young soul here. She does so many cool things. I'm very inspired by her persistence and her passion. It's it's unbelievable how long um, our, our, the families of our, our families have known each other, and I am so thankful that she's here to share her passion with you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, can you please help give me a warm round of applause and welcome Auntie Judy Flores, all the way from the beautiful island of Guahan in the beautiful village of Irohan. Come on up, Auntie Judy. Wait, Auntie Judy, did I do that too fast? No, it's you. Yes, it's you. I was like, okay. Okay. All right. Please pretend you have one more time for Auntie Judy. Woo! And I'm going to tell on, J on Janelle because she is a mover and a shaker, and I really want to give her family credit. Her dad, John Farron, uh, has spent what decades putting together the House of Chamorro uh, display that you see over here. And he, he's got his whole family involved, most of them live here in San Diego. But uh, I'm, I'm a former classmate with his sister since sixth grade, right, back in Guam. And uh, uh, I know she, she's a Tintago. If you know what Tintago means, it means you're the, what did Bob say? The minion. You're the minion. When John says, send me this from Guam, she's got to go find a, a woven basket or a certain book or or whatever you see there. I think Doring, your Auntie Doring is the one who, who made it happen. So please take time out to go look at the uh, amazing crafts that were produced by the Tomorrow people. And uh, yay for the Feheran family who really brought culture to San Diego. I, I'm, I'm kind of a, I, I don't look like your typical Chamorro, but uh, I like to say that Chamorro culture is, uh, uh, I'm passing it on to my children from, from my husband's family. I have my daughter Sandy Uslander here, who is uh, the reason I come as often as I can. And I'm so happy to be a part of what's happening in San Diego. And uh, what I uh, I grew up in the village of Inarohan, and I w came at a time when everybody spoke Chamorro, so I had to le learn Chamorro, and I am so thankful that I did. And uh, unfortunately, I can't speak Chamorro to my children, and that's my fault. That's our generation's fault because we thought, oh, they're gonna learn from their friends. Well, guess what? All the, the mothers of that time, the young mothers were saying, speak English so you'll be really smart in school. And unfortunately, that generation lost out. And big efforts are being made now to revive the Chamorro language. And I see it happening in our young people. And I, I'm optimistic, right? We are optimistic. <laughs> We're the first tomorrow Optimist Club ever. And we, we were founded in San Diego. So uh, we're here because of, of uh, Chamoc SD, which is the Chamorro Optimist Club of San Diego. And out of that was born the House of Chamorros and I'm so excited because Sandy keeps me informed, of course, and we've been raising funds like crazy for the past two years, and I see JR back there, and JR was the most optimistic of all of us because we formed about two years ago, and JR walked into the room and he said, we have a chance to have one of those nine new cottages that are going to be built here in Balboa Park. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I thought, yeah, right. Yeah. Two years and other countries have been raising funds and hoping for this to happen for 10 years. But we did it. Folks, we did it. 
So I, I really, I'm an optimist. We're going to do it all the way. We're going to revive the language. So my focus uh, ever since I moved to Guam from Colorado, my parents became teachers. My parents were teachers and they were hired to teach in Guam in 1957. And we never left. We're still there. <laughs> Second generation is still there. So when I was growing up, everything was new to me, of course. I was looking at the culture with wonder and appreciating living in a busy little village. And unfortunately, things always change. And they don't, don't change, you know, they change for the better mostly. But I, myself and people my age, of course, we miss what we knew and it's no longer there. So I like to, to keep reminding people of what it was in the 1950s, 1960s, growing up in, in Guam and in the Chamorro culture. So I did a lot of research and uh, what I'm gonna talk about briefly today is how the Chamorro culture has revived and reconnected with their past. Now when I was growing up, uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, in Inarahan Middle School, Inarahan Junior High School, um, I remember the first time in sixth grade, we were gonna have a cultural day. And my school principal, Miss Agagi, that's her, said, okay, I want everybody to get a mumu dress and we're going to get the, uh, the Hawaiian whisks. And I had one classmate, Rose Ferrer, who knew how to dance hula. And that's what we did for cultural day. Now, I love hula, but it's not our culture. But that's what we had come to in that time. We had been Americanized since 1900. We had been told to speak English so that you could get ahead in school. Everybody had good intentions, but the result was that we lost a lot. So uh, from that time, dancing hula and wearing mumu dresses, and I even remember dancing square dance, but we didn't have tomorrow dance. And I look around with pride now, and I look around even here in San Diego, Thank you, Sandy, we have Uno hit, and thank you, Heidi, who taught them, and all of you parents who were so enthusiastic. We have the Uno hit cultural group, among others, and this is what the kids now grew up with. So aren't we lucky? We have Chamorro culture that I didn't even grow up with. People my age did not grow up with because nobody taught us our pre-Spanish history. We had to re research it and relearn it. And it all started with the dance groups. And a lot of my research had to do with interviews with people like uh, Francisco Rabone, Frank Rabone, who I'm sure you all know. He's a master. He was designated the first dance master of Tomorrow Dance, because in 1984, he started dancing a dance that none of us ever saw. And it was the Ulitao dance. How many of you know now what the Ulitao dance is? Woo! Ulitao, the young bachelors, the young men of ancient Chamorro society. Oh, I don't, I'm not the dance expert, no. <laughs> So he started that movement and in 1984 he was starting to do this and I was working for the Arts Council and my job was to identify traditional arts, to document it and to promote it and my boss was in Washington DC, a dear lady by the name of Bess Hawes who was head of traditional arts in Washington, D.C. And we didn't have email, so of course I had to write her, and I said, what do I do in this case? 
I mean, it's definitely popular. It's grassroots. It's something that's happening. It's very exciting. But, nope. I mean, it wasn't passed down, so can I promote it? And she wrote back, you know, snail mail. Two, two weeks later, she says, just present it for what it is and watch what happens. And look what it is. It's Chamorro culture and it's alive. So from the dance, which was revived from that time, and remember this, our version of ancient Chamorro dance started in 1984. And that's a fact. But the fact also is that it was based on research and it was based on looking at what we actually had in our past as far as we could tell. So maybe an ancient person who came today and looked at what we are doing might not understand it, but we are interpreting what we know of our ancestors. So it is ancient tomorrow dance. And congratulations to all of you who are doing this. Now the other thing that I've most recently researched is the body ornamentation that went together with Chamorro Dance. Because when they first started dancing Chamorro Dance, and I remember Frank Rabone saying this, he said, just use brown cloth because we know that, according to history, ancient Chamorros did not wear clothing. So just keep it very, very, very simple. So they were wearing brown sadi and uh, coconut leaves for the top because of course you know today's terms of modesty are required that they cover themselves so it was very very plain and they maybe put some flowers and that was it well artists looked at that and they looked at the dances and they looked at uh, the pride that was coming out of tomorrow the tomorrow communities and they started making art that could complement this. And they started researching and thinking, what did we have in ancient times? So that was another story. And what we discovered through archeological digs and through uh, a few history uh, documents by uh, uh, early missionaries who talked about it, we found out that Chamorros valued spondylus very much and they used shells and they had certain uh, objects that we now know were used or worn by Chamorros of ancient times. And I've asked people from the, from the audience to come up here, my friends, and I thank you for, for uh, coming up to help model these things. Now, the first thing that we, we started seeing people wearing was spondylus and just other types of shells. So, uh, I'm wearing a spondylus. A spondylus is made from the, uh, the spiny oyster. It looks like an oyster, but it has spines. You know, a shell made out of the same thing as shells, but uh, they, they polish it down, they use different parts of it, and they make a shiny uh, bit of jewelry out of this. And one early burial that people discovered in Guam, in Ipau Beach, when they were digging for building there, was the burial of a young woman, and she was wearing spondylus from head to toe. And this is very rare because normally they would pass on this jewelry, it wouldn't be buried with a person. But she must have been very, uh, very prestigious, very high uh, in society because she was wearing all of the spondylus. They dated the burial remains from about 15, 1600, so that means things would have already been changing. They, we had been discovered by the West. So things were changing. So anyway, this lady was buried. She was a young person. And she had spondylus discs as a headband. And she had a pendant of spondylus. Now, are any of you wearing spondylus? Later on, I can 
show you this one up close if you'd like to look at it. Uh, and then she had spondylus that went from, it was a string of spondylus that went from her shoulder down to her waist all around. And then she had a spondylus belt and she would have had a skirt that, that started about uh, at her belly button. But of course that didn't survive in the burial. So all we saw was uh, spondylus discs that were about two inches across and they went down her body like this in rows and in the front and in the back. So she was wearing the full body ornamentation all in spondylus. Another thing they would have used would be turtle shell. But again, turtle shell doesn't survive like shell does. So we have very little evidence of, of uh, actual turtle shell. But there were people who recorded seeing the turtle shell. So we have those descriptions. Another very interesting uh, body ornamentation that I'd like most of you to come up. Uh, can, I, can I have... Uh, what is your name? From Marlena from Unuhit, right? Marlena, and she's one of the Unuhit dancers. You are a queen, aren't you? Yes, she was our queen. She helped us raise funds and represented Chamorro culture, even at Fespec. Wow. I'm honored. Okay. So she has uh, a shell that is in the shape of what I'm going to talk about next. This is a uh, Sinahi, and Sinahi in Chamorro means new moon, the crescent moon. And that must have had a, a lot of significance in ancient Chamorro society because the islands, starting with Guam in the furthest south, heading up towards Japan, the 13 islands form a crescent and we call them the Sanahi Islands. Some people have seen that. If you go online, you'll find that. If you type in Sanahi, you will see a lot of references to that. So it all, it's, it's the Sanahi shape, the crescent shape of the new moon. Now the new moon means no moon, right? But apparently in ancient Chamorro, Sanahi was described as the new moon in its first phase and that had a name, and Sinahi something else would be a little bit more of the crescent. So now it is, it's called Sinahi, okay? The crescent. Um, and then, of course, we don't know what they, what they wore, but, but the, all our dance groups learn how to make their skirts. And this is made out of coconut, and they can preserve it they string it together and tie it with, um, tie it with, uh, they sew it, they actually sew it, and then they cut it into various layers, and they're, if they're careful, it will last maybe two, three years, if you're careful, right? Maybe longer. She's optimistic. Yes, five years. Wow, you've like taken good care of it. And then, of course, you have the other braid that would, uh, you could weave fresh leaves into it. And uh, we'll just say this is fresh leaves. But you've taken good care of this too. Okay. Uh, and then of flowers, of course, would be a form of adornment. Now, uh, I'm, I'd li like to ask the three of you, Janice and Drake, Brad, Janice and Brad, and jo Javen, and my friend, now they are wearing various forms of Chamorro jewelry and the one that you see here by the men and this is mostly born by, worn by men, it's, it's the Sinahi and these have been found in uh, ancient ruins, places where people lived but very, very rarely. You don't find it very often. And these are replicas of what people found. And again, it's the Sinahi, it's the crescent shape. And they are both made out of Hema, which is giant clamshell. The thick part of the giant clamshell 
and uh, it comes in various sizes, but it takes a real He-Man to wear, you know, something big like that. So you saw Marlena was wearing a very thin one out of another type of shell, and uh, yeah, and then so this is the Sinahi, the crescent moon, and then just recently, maybe in the last five or six years, the women kind of decided, hey, we must have had something too. So we have the Gualafun, the full moon. So both this piece that is in, uh, that is, uh, no, it's not the one I'm wearing today. Yeah. Okay, so, so, uh, I have another one that's the Gualafun shape, and this is the actual uh, spondylus shape. So, thank you very much for, for helping me do show and tell today. Oh, the, the, the blouse that I have, if you come and see closely uh, afterwards, this was a, a yardage that was made by Erisa um, Cristobal in Guam for the Guam Visitors Bureau. She designed this and it's all the tomorrow jewelry patterns. And because I was on the GB Boom Award at the time, I got one. So that the material isn't available. I just happened to be lucky and got this one. Say something in Because I'm always impressed with her speaking tomorrow. Half of my all look gifted not tomorrow. My all look not send my to the senior to Fatu Karabiahi, Karaguaha, no, in Etnun Guinea Giza. San Diego, Senior Duke Matu. San Mago Duke, I stay in Denanya tomorrow in San Diego. I'm very happy to have this, this gathering of tomorrows in San Diego, and let's have many more. Thank you very much. Great job, great job. Dr. Judy. Back to Janelle. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for Auntie Judy Flores. Woohoo! That tomorrow is on point, Auntie. I learned how to say it recently, Zahu Kumandu. Is that right? Yeah? I like to play uh, Mungi Kumandu. Hungu? Yeah? <laughs> You're like Janelle. You gotta work. I know Latsidi, which means hurry up, because I talk too much sometimes. Every time I turn, I'm gonna turn right. I feel like Zoolander. Have you guys seen that movie? I can't turn left. Because it won't give me feedback. Okay. Screw right, screw right, go up, up, up. I'm doing like the cha-cha slide up here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're ready to get up and ready to move, it's a good time because we have some youngins who are here to share what they have learned under the direction of Uncle Tony Chotis. They are called mezclat, which means mixed. What does mezclat mean? Oh, yes. It means mixed. So they're mixing it up. They're bringing old school, they're bringing new school, they're bringing their own school. The attitude. Ooh, I didn't can't you write either? <sighs> <laughs> Just go forward, you know, go forward, not backwards. There, I figured it out. I can't turn with the microphone. Okay, so, uh, real quickly, they're so amazing. I have Kai and Aiden Treltis. I have Kai Quintanilla, Alina Chargalov, uh, Sofia Archuleta, and Nenny, how do you say your name? Je Janica. Janica uh, Villa Gomez. And it's all again under Uncle Tony. And this is a really amazing program by the Chamorro Hands in Education Links Unity, aka Chitlu. One more time Chamorro Hands in Education Links Unity. And it's called Chitlu. Oh, we got one more. And you got Ronan next to Look at that Nenny down there. So ladies and gentlemen, I need you to help welcome these youngsters who are holding it down for our, our tomorrows and representing us. Yay! They're ready, so make some noise, woo! All right, uh, we're gonna take you back to the beautiful island of Guam with our first song, Half a Day. Really meaning what they say, each time they simply say,
song, we're back in Guam with Chamarita Girl. Okay. identity, language, dance, and cultural artifacts. Uh, if you don't know what Chamorro is or who, it, where they come from, they are all of the beautiful people from the islands of the Marianas Islands, which includes, the most well known is Guahan, because it's the biggest one, and then our Commonwealth of Northern Marianas Islands, like Tinian and Aurora and uh, Saipan. So, uh, today we're celebrating our identity and who we are by sharing our time together. Uh, that also includes stories and some history lessons. So, thank you again to Uncle Mario and Auntie Judy Flores and just recently these youngsters here and Uncle Tony for being able to uh, showcase who we are in these many different avenues. Uh, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to call up uh, this amazing group of musicians and vocalists uh, run under, well, they're called Island Mix, and it's right. Etty Janice is the spearheading lady. She's so amazing. She has books and books of songs that we could sing all week to, maybe all month, maybe all year. We could just spend time singing and hanging out uh, in Chamorro, in English, in Spanish, all kinds of singing. So I had the privilege of singing with Auntie Janice uh, at our last event. It was called December Nights. If you went to December Nights, it makes a noise. 
do it like that. It's cold. It's still kind of cold. If you're really cold, you can scoot like a couple inches to the sun. It feels better, I promise. It's more malik. <laughs> um, okay. All right, cool. Mic check. Woo! Thank you so much for that temporary little break right there. We are going to have this wonderful group called Island Mist. Yeah? When you think about mist, it's nice and it's comforting. It's not like raindrops and you're like, oh my god, I can't... You can like embrace it. Um, they do a fun mixture of Chamorro music, island music, all kinds of good music that makes you feel really good. Lighting. And not touch... So ladies and gentlemen, what they're going to do is they're going to play some music for us. So if you want to dance, if you want to get in the center and you want to move around, don't be shy. I'm going to pull some of you up to dance. Don't be afraid. No, I'm just kidding. We'll get some moving on, okay? And then we'll have some dance after. But in order to see them dance, you got to dance first. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. All right. So um, how, are we, how are we doing? Pretty good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and give it up for Alan Miss. Testing. Sorry for all the. Better? All right. Half a day, everybody. We're called Island Miss, and Janelle has been awesome with our MC today. And all our, um, the Mess Club, they call Mess Club tomorrow kids. Yeah, Mess Club means mixed, as Janelle mentioned. Okay, we're going to do half a day. Half a day. In America, they say, how are you? Philippines, come on, sir, Kayo. But when you're in the oh, man, please say half a day, half a day, half a day. Everybody sing along. An American replies, I am fine. Filipino say, my booty no man. The Chamorros would say it with a click. Total Molly, total Molly, total Molly. I'm and the sentimental. Way down in Medicaid Everyone will surely say Hop up, hop up, hop a day So when you're going to Guam You can learn to say Simple words you'll hear every day But when you're in Guam, you can say half a day, half a day, half a day. And American replies, I am my Filipino say, my booty na man. The Chamorros say it with a click. Toto Mole, Toto Mole, Toto Mole. Simple words you hear every day. It's so easy to say. Try it, you may. Half a day, half a day, half a day. Toto Molly, Toto Molly, Toto Molly. Half a day. Thank you. Yeah. People wondering what, what is a Chamorro? Chamorro are the people of uh, the native people of the Mariana Islands, Guam, Saipan, Tinnanada, and and our like to the people 
the native people are called Chamorro and our language is also called Chamorro. So I invite you to go and check out all the different uh, displays and artifacts we have here in the lawn. And um, also, if you're interested in the program, getting a copy of the program, we have our videographer over here, Luis Contino. So come and see him. He's very kind, doesn't mind, and he can get you a copy of the footage for today. All right, the next song we're going to do is a song. <laughs> Robert's from uh, the village of Chalampago, so we're going to sing this song. <laughs> Chalampago Blues. Good cha cha song, so if you want to. Um, yeah, we invite you to come up here and dance for us. And it's a big compliment if you dance for us. Thank you. Ready? I'm 
We've got even a singing president of House of Tremoral. Lily McDonald over here, Robert Cabrera, 
Yeah, Jeff McElroy, and he's a guest player, singer when we go out and do some gigs. And then I'm Janice with my guitar. Um, Jeff has got his grandchildren here, so they're going to sit on his lap. As he plays. It's all cool. This is a family event. We have our children involved at a very young age. This is my magic moment. So different and so new. Was like any other. Until I kissed you. And then it happened. It took me by surprise. I knew that you felt it too. By the look in your eyes. Sweeter than wine Softer than a summer night Everything I want to have Whenever I hold you tight This magic moment While your lips are close to mine Will last forever So different and so new was like any other Until I kissed you, I knew it happened Summer night, everything I want to have, whenever I hold you tight, this magic moment, while the lips are close to mine, will last forever, forever till the end of time. Whoa. <laughs> Where's that Jeff Macaray, president of the House of the World? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Jeff. That was awesome. Yeah. Now we have um, we have the Tomorrow Optimist Club of San Diego out here, and uh, they have three um, signature programs. They have the childhood program that's led by Donna Rodriguez. And then we have uh, Uno Hit Dancers, that are led by uh, Sandy Slander. And then we have uh, the Uno at, we have Uno Hit, just House of Chamorro. We have Uno Hit and House of Chamorro. And so this is a big, big to do for us. We're going to, the ninth house to be built in the uh, international cottages. And, um, and that should be coming along without the permits and everything. So construct Groundbreaking, we hope, is soon. Anyway, um, let me do another number now. Okay. All right. So we're going to do a song called My Marianas. My heart gets to be there every day 
It's a place that I love. It's a place that I call home. Call home. I miss all my friends and family who are dear to me. The fragrance of beautiful lace that smells so sweet. The tropical breeze is blowing through my hair. The one that people found everywhere. It's a place that I love. It's a place that I call home. Mariana. Paradise across the sea, Marianas, is where I long to be. Oh, Marianas, you set my spirit free. You're the only place for me. Someday I'll return to live in my island home. Share all the things I've learned since I've been gone. I'll always remember who I am. Never forget where I began. It's a place that I love. It's a place that I call home. Marianas, my paradise across the sea. Marianas is where I long to be. Oh, Marianas, you set my spirit. You're the only place You're the only place Yes You're the only place For me For me For me My Marianas, the Marianas, Guam, Saipan, Tianyan, and Rhoda. Yes, we celebrate our Chamorros today. Also, we have, uh, this is the month, uh, it's, it is Chamorro month, March is Chamorro month, and we're going, the Chamorro Hands in Education Links Unity, uh, 501C, it's a nonprofit, is going to be celebrating um, us tomorrow's with the Chamorro Cultural Festival, the 24th of March at Cal State San Marcos. Awesome event, you should come on out and check that out. Um, plenty of great food and then entertainment all day long. And we're going to do all day this. Hey, next number, Robert's gonna do it. It's a very beautiful song. Can 
number um, by Ruby Santos called Take Me Back. Oh, 
Perform. We're going to have the Uno Hit dancers come up, and then when we're all done, we can just go uh, congregate under the tree and do a jam session. Anybody have their instruments with us? So with them, we're welcome to come play along. Okay.
dance the night away. All righty. Thank you.
of the Mariana Islands are called Chamorro, and the language is also called Chamorro. And you can learn more about our, our culture and history with the booth of that's the huge booth by the um, foundation of Chamorro artifacts. Alrighty, what are we doing next? Okay, Robert is going to take us in with a Chamorro song, a Papa song. Oh, 
dancers after I had missed performance here. And Say, say, say that you love me. 
Unfinished melodies, it's a bunch of. He's gonna look at Lily. <laughs> okay, because it, this song is not written down, we just have to go with what Robert does. So here it is Unfinished Melody.
Unfinished melodies and original of Robert Cabrera right over here. Isn't that beautiful? All right, Thank we're going to have um, take a few moments to um, uh, set up for the Unoha dancers. Um, it's the cream of the. <laughs> they're awesome. You just have to see them. Stick around. I need your help and assistance to see happy birthday to Auntie Janice. We share the same birthday month. Ready? So, ready? Set, go! Happy birthday to you. 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 May the dear Lord bless you. May the dear Lord bless you. Have the dear Uh, what's going to happen next is we have the one and only uh, Uno Hit. And Uno Hit is a program that was established in 2003. So they're still uh, growing as a group and they're always welcoming new participants. Whether you're age 2 to 92, they would love to have you. And their goal is to provide a free tuition um, avenue to learn the Chamorro culture through dance, through language, through health and through fitness, yes? So, try to like, move around more, you've been eating a little bit too much chamorro food, or whatever kind of food. <laughs> you wanna work it off? Come and see the Uno Hit group. Uh, it's led and run by Auntie Sandy, who slanders Lauren. Or did I go backwards? Lauren, who slanders? There we go. And, it's such an amazing, um, Combala com compilation of um, support from NT Heidi from Kutudan Chamorro Performers. She comes down um, on the weekends and she makes time to spend with the group out here and build a sister group. So at PIFA and at the Chamorro Cultural Fest, they perform together as one, which is what Kuno Hit stands for. We are one. Yes? So, NT Janice is getting those things organized. I have some more to say. Hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, I want to also give a quick shout out to the, the dance studio where they're at. They're, they're at Muevete Dance Studio at Lemon Grove. So if you're free on Saturdays, every Saturday they're there from sat, uh, 9 o'clock to 11. And if you want to know more information, you can go and see Auntie Brienda over at the food booth with all the... That food was good. I just have the chicken killer with me. Now I can go take a nap. Here we go. Okay. So, how are we doing, guys? Are you guys ready? Are you still ready to go? Okay. Are you talking? I can talk. This is my voice. Just kidding. But if you just uh, popped in, welcome to the second annual Hopalay Festival. Uh, we are a program of the Chamorro Optimist Club here in San Diego, in addition to the Child Care Cancer Program and the Uno Hit Dance Project, all under the Chamorro Optimist Club. If you don't know much about the Chamorro Optimist Club, I'm so confused. He's right there, Uncle Greg. Wave your hand, Uncle Greg. Look at that young guy. Go say hi, give him a hug, a high five. Get your blessing. Make sure you do that. And he will be able to give you a little bit more information about how to be involved with the Chamorro Optimist Club. Also, we have some of our sponsors today. Oh, look, I'm getting a phone call. Sorry, I'm seeing right now. Um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna do is uh, give a chance to share who we are through dance, through language, through fun, through building. So if you haven't already, turn to the next person and give them a high five. He's like, no, I'm not gonna I gotta take pictures right now. Oh, cold. Are your hands cold? I should make you stand up and we should dance together. Oh, cha -cha. Yeah? Alright. So, how are you? How are you? Oh. 
All right, my name is Janelle. I am here with my family. We organized the foundation for Chamorro Arts, Crafts, Artifacts, and Education. That small little tiny Kumatlet team was built by my dad and his brothers and sisters as a way to not only spend time together, but really commemorate who we are as Chamorro people. A long time ago in the next, wasn't that long. In the 60s, before multiculturalism was really cool, my aunts, uncles, and some of you probably were not allowed to speak Chamorro. Right? It was like, oh, we gotta assimilate, we gotta be not tomorrow, whatever that means. And it took a while for us to really reclaim who we are, reclaim who we were, reclaim all of the pain and the suffering so that we can re be resilient together, right? So, I'm so passionate to share this time with you. And if you wanna see this other young guy, everybody say, hi, Uncle Jeff. He's like, right, listen. He was the one that sang with the Unohe group. I mean, uh, sorry, Island Mist. He's like, dang, Uncle Jed, he got some, he got some vocals. So go see him if you want to learn more specifically about the House of Chumori. And then, um, this group that's about to come up, um, they're, they're such an amazing, how do you say it? All ages, really, all ages. The nannies, to not many Okay, we're after that I'm gonna stop. Stop for me. Okay. So uh, real quickly I wanna double check. I wanna make sure. If you're really freezing, make some noise. If you are tomorrow, make some noise. If you're ready to see this amazing dance group Uno Hit, make some noise! I don't think they're ready. No, see, they're not even. Okay, one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited to introduce them one more time. Uh, they're here in San Diego. Go and see them after we want to continue dancing. Uh, tomorrow dance. We're moving around. We're gonna get a picture. Smile, selfie if you want to. Right now, go for it. All right. Ready to go. All right, one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Please make some noise for Uno Hey!
Also want to incorporate the, all of our, our, our other sister islands, so Tinian, Rhoda, Saipan, and all of our Commonwealth of Northern Marianas Islands. So when we decided to choose the, the name of the house, uh, it was a very, very uh, fun conversation, okay? <laughs> because Chamorro people uh, inhabit more than one land. It's all of those islands of the Marianas. So Chamorro, as you can see, it is a way for us all to celebrate who we are um, and this is one of our favorite ways of doing it so these dances you're seeing right now are reflective of our ancient period pre-contact before the spanish before the japanese before whoever came to our land right and um you'll also get a chance perhaps to see some of the spanish dance after the fact so one more time i know it's really cold ladies and gentlemen but they're up here dancing for you so please make some noise In Chamorro, we say Nenny for baby. Everybody say Nenny. Nenny. So oftentimes, whenever I'm seeing anything small, I'm like, oh, that's a Nanny dog, or oh, that's a Nanny house, or those are the real Nannies, the babies over there. So this, some of them, it's their first time, so they've done it a couple times, but it's so awesome to have them up here. So, one more time, give it up for the Nannies! <laughs> Thank you. 
Now we have our Famalao and coming on, our very our graceful ladies who are going to be taking us back to our ancient days as well. And they're going to all be coming out. So again, we are a Chamorro-based dance group called Uno Hit. 
get free tuition. So they come, they dance, their parents bring them and support them. Give it up for the parents! Woo! To support the nannies and all the parents who are dancing alongside. I think it's quite amazing to participate together. So this is such an awesome celebration of doing that. Um, but one more time, we're going to bring them all out. Give it up for Uno Hits! <laughs> Big warm round of applause to Auntie Janice right over here, taking care of everybody. And Auntie Sandy, is Auntie Sandy in the audience? Where's she at? I want to give her for Auntie. There, she's all the way in the back. Glad to see her. Give her for Auntie Sandy, who's under the director of Udo Hey. Woo! So, at this time, if you haven't already, take your pictures. Take your pictures. You can selfie picture. Yeah. 
All right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we are so thankful that you all came out to support us in our second annual Hafeday Festival. If you have no idea what Hafeday means, raise your hand. You don't know. That's okay. Hafeday means hello. How are you? In tomorrow. So Hafeday. Also, there's a going joke. How long does it take to get around the island of Guam? Half a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we're celebrating this uh, for the goal to have our own international cottage built with the other nine that are going to be here. So we are on our way to raising all the funds necessary. And it starts off with you all coming and supporting us at events like this. Uh, so I want to quickly thank the Guam Visitors Bureau. I want to thank Chamorro Optimist Club. I want to thank Uno Hit, the Child, Ca Child Care Cancer Program. I want to thank my family, the Foundation for Chamorro Arts, Class Artifacts and Education. And I want to thank Uncle Jeff, our our, our president, Uncle Jeff, who's always ignoring me when I talk about him, he's like, don't do it to me. Uncle Jeff is our president of the House of Tomorrow. We want to say thank you so much to Auntie Judy Sel Flores, who came all the way from Guam to talk to us today, and she had an event yesterday. And also Uncle Mario Borja, who came up and gave his history lesson on the segment tomorrow and our community as voyagers. Also, say hi to Auntie Doris and... And uh, oh, our president of Chetley, David Atalik, was around too. Uh, we have a festival coming up March 24th. That's the Chamorro Cultural Festival at San Marcos. So if you want more, you got to come back to you, okay? We'll be there as well. So at this time, I would like to invite you, if you want to stick around, there's going to be a jam session with Auntie Janice under the tree somewhere. So if you want to sing or come talk story and 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 play, you can come see Auntie Janice. But you want to say, Thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. And please have some time to spend with each other and ask. And then dance. That dance is going on. So if not, please stay warm and come check us out for our next events that are happening. Also, thank you again to Mr. Luis here who's documenting us. So uh, did I miss anybody, Auntie Janice? I got everybody. Also, it's our birthday. GBB, one more time. Guam Visitors Bureau. We want to give them another shout out for all of their resources and all of their, their pivotal things that they're doing for us over in Guam and here in San Diego. And this art, ooh, and our Sienna Mike Club. If you want to be on the Sienna Mike Club, they also, they did that $75,000 to our House of Tomorrow project. So we're so thankful for the relationship that Auntie Dorison and David Atalik, uh, Atalik were able to help solidify for us. Um, so thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Woo!